Today's video covers the final preparation steps for winter. I'm actually wearing a jacket outside today. All of this and more coming up at the Orchid Hut. Welcome back to the Orchid Hut. My name is Dana and thank you for joining me in the video today where we will be talking about my final preparation steps for bringing orchids indoors. Uh, this morning it was a very brisk 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It's still, you know, a temperature that the orchids can tolerate. However, this may be the last week where most of these orchids will be happy outdoors. Um, it's about 10.30 in the morning right now. You can tell that the sun is very much diminished from how it is during the growing season. It's still more shady in my highlight area than it is during the growing season. So many of these plants would probably be a bit happier in warmer temperatures indoors as well as the grow lights where their growing season might even be a little bit extended, which can be a good thing. Uh, the wind out here is rather brisk today, so if you hear the audio cutting in and out, it's probably because of the wind and you can definitely see uh, the wind in the shadows as well as um, some of the leaves uh, being buffeted about. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to take just one orchid indoors and we're going to talk through how I uh, begin the more detailed preparation steps for bringing orchids in and the primary goal is to make sure that I'm not bringing in any sort of disease, infection, or critter. And we have a lot of critters in Southeast Texas. Okay, so I'm going to choose one of the orchids off of the bench here, and I'll meet you back inside. Be right back. Okay, so I actually decided to bring in two different plants for example purposes because they are a tiny bit different from each other. I have my radiata species orchid here, which we will be using as an example for winter prep. And then I have my yellow bird orchid here. And both of these were uh, taken off of the planting shelf outside uh, just a little while ago. Now, previously, I did have these orchids in the garage for several days and the reason for that was because we were getting two or three days of rain and then the temperatures were going to be really low at night and wet and cold are really a bad combo for orchids. So the first day of rain, you know, I let them get mother nature's vitamins and then I brought them into the garage so that the pots would have a bit of a chance to dry out for a couple of days before the temperatures dropped. Now one other thing about my garage location, and this is going to come into play as we're talking about the winter prep steps, my garage can be maintained about 10 degrees warmer than the outside temperature if I remember to close the garage door before sunset. So it traps the warmth of the daytime in the garage and then say for example the temperature drops to 45 degrees Fahrenheit um, at night then I can go in the garage and the thermometer still reads 55 degrees which is you know a much warmer temperature for orchids. So since that rainy cold spell um, I did put these back out on the shelf because I wasn't exactly ready to bring them in. But now, this week, we are having much, much cooler temperatures overnight. The uh, north wind is rather brisk, and it is now time to make preparations to be ready to bring things in for the winter, um, because maybe in another week or two, I won't even be able to maintain the orchids in the garage that well if we have 
a real true cold snap. So today's video is going to divide the winter, the remaining winter prep steps um, into five different steps and each of those five steps has some sub steps. But let's just kind of recap what I've done up until this point. I have all of my shelving ready indoors. I have all of my lights arranged like I want them to be. I have everything cleared up, cleaned out, you know, and I have thought about placement so that I have a place to put tall orchids and the ones that I need to get to more frequently for watering or misting um, can be pulled forward so that I don't have to reach behind something else to get to it. So all of that work has already been done and hopefully you've done the same if you'll be bringing your orchids in. So now we have the final five main steps that I go through. Now there is nothing you know, magical or mandatory, oh, it's a very loud motorcycle, mandatory or magical about these steps. It is simply what I do. If, you know, you're not certain what to do, you can, you know, certainly follow what I do. Or maybe you can just pick up on an extra little step here or there and go, hmm, that might really help me out in my winter preparation. So, um, it's this is meant to explain what I do, uh, not necessarily what you have to do. Step number one, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I will do is I will take the plants from the outdoor growing area and I will bring them into the garage and I have an area cleared out over to the side of the garage where I can um, place the pots. Now you'll notice from this little clip here that it's a very, very sunny spot and I do have to put the shade cloth up because um, you know right at the, the opening of the garage there because that intense sun could cause sunburn even though the temperature is rather cool right now um, and the reason that I just initially just bring them into the garage is because sometimes just moving an orchid from its outdoor growing place can eliminate any pests bugs critters that are crawling on the plant because they go, ooh, I'm not where I was. I think I need to just evacuate this plant. And I have often found that if a pot has just a few ants in it, just moving locations will uh, cause the ants to just crawl away and they sort of resolve themselves. So step number one is to move locations. And then, you know, I would leave the orchid there for two or three days, two or three nights. And after that, then you can move on to step number two. Okay, so after the orchids have been moved to a different location for a couple of days and nights, we can move on to step number two, which is to just inspect and tidy the plant. Okay, so this uh, radiata orchid was recently repotted, so there's less inspecting and tidying to do than you might have on some of your other orchids. This particular pot has not really gathered any debris from the trees on top of the pot, so there's not a lot to pick out, but I do uh, pick out any sort of leaves or droppings from the tree because you really don't need to bring all of that into your house. There is a dry leaf or two, so I'll go ahead and get that out. I'm not exactly certain why I did not cut away the old bloom on this plant when I repotted it, but I will go ahead and do that now as part of my tidying. And uh, there's not a lot more to do on this plant. You know, you can have a look at the leaves and decide, well, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and just trim that. And typically, if an orchid has yellowed leaves, I do remove that prior to bringing it indoors. Um, I don't even know that there's a reason to put cinnamon on that. And this one was very, very easy to do because it had been recently repotted. 
just uh, for the sake of show and tell here, I will show you that the new growths have a ton of new little roots coming along, so that's really a great sign. All right, so let's have a look at the yellow bird orchid, which has been in its pot for, oh gosh, uh, probably by the time we get to spring, this one will have been in this pot two years, and it will probably need a repot next year. It is um, growing over the sides of the pot in some cases. This one has more uh, leaf and tree debris on top because um, it has just been uh, in this pot outside for longer. If you have a pair of long tweezers, that could be helpful at this point if you don't feel like you can reach in and get out the pieces of debris. And again, it's about, you know, doing some work but not necessarily having perfection. Okay, so leaves and baby dry acorns that didn't hang to the tree during our drought. I'm picking all of those out and that looks pretty good. Okay, so now, um, and I did this with the other plant even though I didn't mention it. You know, you just want to do a really good visual inspection of the top of the plant. Do you see anything that needs to be treated? Do you see anything that needs to be sprayed with peroxide or possibly neem oil or, you know, any indication of spider mites or whatever um, sort of malady you happen to get in your orchid collection? You want to make a careful inspection of that. You can pick off uh, some of the dried orchid bits uh, just as part of the cleanup. And on this orchid, I really I don't see any problems visually here. Not seeing any reason to really do anything. I'm not seeing any sign of slugs or snails or ants at the top of the pot, although that doesn't mean that there's not some ants inside the pot. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so this is looking really good. Now, the other thing I do is because they're coming in and they're not going to be in their decorative pots and I want them to sort of be able to sit on the shelf and kind of be level, I guess you could say, and not be lopsided or prone to tipping over, I will go ahead and trim off the roots that are coming out the bottom of the pot. You know, as these were in decorative containers outdoors, there was some moisture that would stay collected in the bottom. And once I bring these in, they're not gonna be in their decorative containers. So these roots would likely uh, die back anyway because they will become more dry. So I just go ahead and I trim that off so that the plant can be level on the shelf. You could, you know, if you wanted to spray the bottom of the pot with some hydrogen peroxide if you uh, feel the need to do that. Okay, so now the pot will sit very level on uh, the drip tray once it comes inside. All right, so that is the completion of step number two and I'll be right back with step number three. Okay, so now we have a nice swimming pool of water. Um, now this is a step, I have to admit, that I don't always do unless I suspect that I have difficulty with snails and slugs, and especially if you don't want to have to use um, and insecticide later on in the winter prep. Okay, so the next thing to do is to flush the orchid pots really, really well. And oftentimes when you flush the pot, you will notice ants and or other creepy crawlies because uh, they don't like being flushed with the water. So pay attention as you're flushing and see what you see. 
Okay, but there could still be snails or slugs hiding in the bottom of the pot and flushing really doesn't remove them. So if you suspect that you might have that situation, after flushing the orchid, you can go ahead and set them in a tub or a bucket of water overnight. And some growers do this with the idea that possibly you're drowning anything in the bottom of the pot. Now, if I were outside with this setup, I would make sure to get the water to the top of the rim here because truly the water does need to be uh, another couple of inches deep in order for this to really be worthwhile. So the water here is not quite deep enough, but you get the idea. And you really only need to do this overnight and then, you know, throw the water away. You will have to reinspect at that point because whatever was at the bottom of the pot may now have crawled to the top and you will need to, you know, pick out any snails or other um, bugs that you might see. Uh, one other word of caution with the flushing and the soaking in water overnight. You want to make certain that you're not doing this um, in a place where the temperatures are really going to drop at night because again, the cold and the wet um, is not a good combo for orchids. So, you know, pick a day and an overnight when, you know, the temperatures are not going to be, you know, below, you know, maybe like the mid 60s. Um, and you know, you only need to do this for one night, and then of course just discard the water and reinspect. And hopefully, um, anything that didn't like the water is either going to be dead now at the bottom of the pot, or it will have crawled to the surface and you can remove it. Okay, moving on to the next step. Okay, so for step number four, we are back out in the garage. And um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know how much I dislike using any sort of pesticides and poisons. Um, I'm much more of an organic uh, orchid grower, but uh, sometimes pesticides are needed and necessary, and this could be one of those cases because you're you're bringing your orchids indoors now. Um, so uh, I, I'm back out in the garage. I don't even really want this inside my house for certain. And I do try to use a minimal amount of pesticides, only what is you know necessary to get the job done. And the way that I do it um, ensures that hopefully there's not any of it left in and around the orchid when I do bring it inside. Okay, so we're gonna just do the radiata orchid as an example here. And pardon a little bit of shakiness here because I am off the tripod. But I have a drip tray here, you know, just a plastic drip tray. And what I do is I take a little bit of fire ant um, pesticide here, fire ant killer, and I put it just around the edges of the drip tray. Okay, and then after that, I take the orchid pot and I set it inside the drip tray. Okay, so if there are any remaining ants inside that pot, um, the, the ant poison will, you know, get, get rid of those ants before you bring the orchid indoors. Now, of course, when I bring the orchid indoors, I'm getting rid of what's in the drip tray and I'm putting it in a clean drip tray. And you can actually use the drip tray for several orchids. So if you're kind of bringing in plants in succession, you know, you can reuse this drip tray with the, the ant poison in it. Now, for sales, snails, not sales, snails and slugs, there is a active ingredient called metaldehyde, and it usually looks like little blue granules like this. And if you are concerned about having snails and slugs inside your pot, 
you can put some of that metaldehyde in a little bottle cap and just set it at the top of the pot. And um, if you have snails, they will be drawn to it and that will kill them. And of course, having it in the little bottle cap makes it easy to remove before you bring the plant inside. Okay, so once again, having a garage is very beneficial here because I know that I can maintain the warmth in here about 10 degrees uh, more than what is outside. So I would leave an orchid uh, in this setup in the garage for at least two or three days, uh, making sure that they are protected by the shade cloth where the garage door opens and there is, you know, a bit too much sun coming in. Okay, that's the end of this step and in two or three days we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so the final step is to remove any of the pesticides in and around the plant, flush it one more time just to make sure to wash away anything that might be at the bottom of the pot. And you can feel relatively certain that you're bringing in a plant that is free of pests. Now on the shelf here are some of my plants that I have already uh, put through all of these steps about a week ago and they are now indoors. Uh, front and center there is Little Stars and they are happy underneath the grow lights for the winter season. Okay, one little final segment for this video because you might be thinking about, well, what if I have orchids that are not in pots? What if they are bare-rooted in baskets? And so uh, I did a brief little clip here for those orchids. And for me, I will be keeping my vandas and catacetums outside probably just a little bit longer than the others. Those will be the last to come in. So here's a little clip on uh, what to consider for anything that might be bare rooted in a basket. Okay, so let's just go over a few exceptions to the steps that I uh, just presented in the earlier part of the video. You know, if you have uh, orchids that are bare rooted in baskets, really uh, the primary thing is to just do a really good visual inspection of the plant as well as the basket and, you know, um, do those things before you bring it indoors. There's not quite as much risk, I would say, with a bare rooted plant because you really don't have to worry about what is inside the pot. Um, there are also some orchids I have that are mounted with just a little bit of sphagnum moss and those plants can also just be visually inspected and you know make sure that there's not any sort of uh, critter on the leaves or inside the sphagnum moss. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. The subscribe button is coming up in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And don't forget that notifications bell to let you know when I've posted something new. Thank you all so much for watching and be sure to take care of your orchids during the winter. Talk to you next time.